might have played a video game before. But have you thought about how video games affect the brain and how you can minimize the negative effects? Well, I thought about this, and it ended up to be my main inquiry question for Capstone. There are many pros and cons of video games and many ways to minimize the negative effects, but today I'll be only talking about a few. Let's, about, let's talk about the pros of video games first. Video games can have many positive effects on people. Well-designed video games are like natural teachers. They provide immediate feedback during gameplay, which reinforces positive skills and allows timely adjustment. Video games also make repeat actions, which can help strengthen brain cell connections. They also help you learn at different rates. Video games can also help you transfer knowledge or skills to the real world. Let me give you some examples. Computer simulations are widely used in fields such as aviation. Candidate pilots practice flying in simulated cockpits for many hours before they are allowed to fly real airplanes. Video games also give you limited time to complete an array of tasks, requiring you to make quick decisions under stress. This requires high level of concentration, which is also another useful skill in the real world. Video games also make you see small details, sharpening your visual ability. And according to Mark Blouse, a neuroscientist in training based in Spain who I interviewed, video games can also help people recover from strokes and slow the degenerative process in Alzheimer's disease. Now let's talk about some of the cons for video games. Video games can cause addiction, and according to Douglas Gentile, a research psychologist from Iowa State University, about 8.5% of youth from the ages of 8 to 18 get addicted to video games. If you do get addicted, you might always sit in one place staring at a screen, and this won't allow you to maintain your other daily tasks, such as studying, physical exercise, and time with your family and friends. And yesterday, the, the, health, the World Health Organization classified gaming disorder as a mental health condition. condition. Kimberly Young, PSYD, clinical director of the Center for Online Addiction, author of Card the Net, says that she has seen severe withdrawal symptoms from game addicts. They become angry, violent, or depressed. If parents take away their computer, the child sits in the corner and cries, refuses to eat, sleep, or do anything. And although video games can improve your eyesight, after staring at a screen for a long period of time, Video games can cause blurred vision, headaches, and if frequent breaks aren't taken to relax your eyes, it can even cause nearsightedness. Not only that, but video games can cause isolation. Parents playing hours upon hours will find themselves losing touch with their children, and children playing for long periods of time will find themselves at odds with their parents. Plus, video games can also cause psychological stress. You might suffer from low self-esteem, have social anxieties, or even suffer from depression. Excesses Excessive gaming can cause feelings of guilt and shame, and uncontrolled gaming can enhance the signs and symptoms of other mental disorders that may be pre-existing. Violent video games probably have the most cons. According to a CNN report, an 18-year-old gunman killed nine people in Germany, and he was a fan of a first-person shooter video game. Violent video games also play a factor in many of the recent high school shootings. Why? Because such type of a video game may distort youth's minds towards violence. And finally, video games can improve the decision-making process, but they can also deteriorate them. Hinting college students who spend too much of their free time playing video games, debate procrastinating on their study, rush through their homework, or simply ignore a deadline in favor of playing their favorite video game. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, now after talking about all the cons of video games, let's think, is there any way to minimize the negative effects from video games? The main way, in my opinion, is to control your time spent on video games if you aren't fully addicted. Limit the time to about an hour per day, which will allow you to do other activities, especially physical. However, if your addiction is a serious problem and you isolate your friends and family and you stop maintaining your daily tasks and you spend video games, you spend time spent on video games is for the majority of your day, then therapy will be a better option and there are places that specialize in video game addiction. Also, you should always make the game make sure the video game you're playing is age appropriate. You can check the ESRB rating to better understand what type of content a video game has. And if you're a parent, you can play video games with your children, better understand the content, and know how children react to it. And what I think is the most obvious way to minimize the negative effects is you should just choose an educational video game that will help you learn rather than a violent video game with many cons.
pros and cons of video games show me there, that there can be great benefits and devastating consequences, but you can minimize those consequences. If we'd only learn one thing from this TED Talk, I hope you would learn that as with everything we do, moderation is key. Video games are designed to be fun, but they're also designed to be addicting. You spend your free time wisely and don't let video games control you. For more information, you can visit my blog post where I talk about my capstone process and my capstone experience. And here's a link to it. Thank you. Yeah,